says in the second level of contemplation. People on the not on the first group, the higher level, where they want to reach their spiritual perfection, and they realize they need to have a relationship with the Gavosh Baruch Hu, and they need to not do a favor for Hashem. Rather, they want to do it because they they want to uh, do it for Hashem. They want to honor Hashem. They want to reach their the highest level of themselves spiritually. So their inspiration must be according to their understanding. It's based on the honor that they crave. So what happens? This second group of people who are motivated by honor and recognition. So we know that these people are not uh, pure-minded like the first group of people who do it for the sake of Hashem. And there's some people who, uh, you know, they, they're, they're focused on the honor they will get on Lama Ba. A guy says, I want to do it for Lama Ba. I want to do the mitzvah so I get reward. I want to do the mitzvah so I can get honor. Okay, it's not the highest level, but at least they want to do the mitzvah. It's called Ben Da'at. Baldat. This is any sensible person understands. The levels of accomplishment and reward are not cha- are not different from each other in the world to come. Everything's according to the one's deeds. The one who has more deeds, and the one who has lesser deeds will be the lowly one. And therefore, it comes out. How can a person, you know, not go over his deeds to motivate himself to do more? Or to reduce his efforts? If afterwards, when he leaves this world, he will be distressed. Rabbi Yonah writes that what is the most painful part of going to the judgment after 120? He says it's not to see all your, it's not to see uh, what your punishment necessarily is going to be. He says the feeling of regret. He says the feeling of regret that you felt you could have done more, and I should have, and I could have, would have, that itself is the most painful thing. That like a person, after 120, he sees all the, th- all the things that he does, and he wished he could have done more mitzvot, and he wished he would have stopped himself from uh, from uh, doing uh, those averodi did, and that pain, you know, in, the, in our physical body, our, our, our emotions dissipate. You know, a guy can be angry, he can't be angry forever, it goes away eventually, because of our bodies are not for, uh, forever, they're temporary, so our emotions are all t- temporary. But in Olam Emet, our emotions are forever. So that regret and that pain. Wow, I should have done more. Why don't I utilize? If only. And that pain, that uh, that feeling, you're in neshama now. Never forgets it. It will feel it forever. So therefore, a person has to know that it's, uh, you don't want to have that regret. And therefore, he says, and then if a person knows this, and he will go to Allah Mabah, and he doesn't have regret, so therefore, as long as we're here, of course, we should utilize the time to repair ourselves and to do better. There are some foolish people who are trying to only lighten the burden of Avodah Hashem from themselves. Why should we worry ourselves with so much, uh, you know, piety and abstinence and I have to work on myself and be mahmir? Why should I do that? Rabbi, it's not enough that I shouldn't be a rasha. At least I'm not a rasha. Do we kill? Do we steal? Do we hurt anybody? It's uh, Why do we have to be a tzaddik? Be? Don't be a tzaddik. Don't be a rasha. Be uh, regular. So he says, he says, We'll not push ourselves to the innermost section of Gan Eden. If I don't have a big portion, I'll have a small portion. At least I'll be there. Right? And It's enough for us. Why do I have to push myself to go on the highest level? So I'll just be a simple Jew, simple Yid. So he says, why is that wrong? I would ask those people one question. What would I tell them? Will they be able to go and bear the burden even in this world? When people see what other person, how he makes a wedding, how he makes a party, how he dresses up, what kind of watch he wears, people say, oh... Look at him, I have to be like them, I have to do up, I have to up one them, I have to give a better plate to them, I have to make my house even better than theirs. So therefore what? He says, how can a person over there, for that, he gets motivated, and for spirituality, he's not motivated. Of course, if a person sees how per- another person do a mitzvah in the highest level, it's inspiring, it's motivating. I also want to do a mitzvah the way. I want to look how he cherishes the mitzvah, how much he spends on the mitzvah. It's also motivating that a person should also be on a high level. So therefore he says, uh, if a person like that for uh, in this world, so how much more so they'll bother them when they go to the next world and see how people on a higher level than did the mitzvah better than them, they would want to, they would feel not comfortable, they would feel I should have done more. So therefore, that's why a person has to make sure not to say, oh, we want to be run of the mill. No, 
you will see that it will bother you afterwards when you decided that you wanted to be run of the mill, that other people did better than you, and you will feel left out, you will feel like you didn't do enough. So therefore he says, Matha, 